Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to talk about the subsurface scattering in Maya. What is subsurface scattering? Well, subsurface, blah, 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 that's a tongue twister. So subsurface scattering is when light penetrates the surface of a translucent object, is scattered by interacting with the material and exits the surface at a different point. So we see subsurface scattering in everyday objects. What subsurface scattering is, also known as SSS, is the light actually comes in to the material, bounces around, actually scatters, and then comes out in different directions. And we see this all the time in real life examples. Uh, we've all seen this too when we put a flashlight in our hands and you can see how pink and red your fingers can turn. And finally, of course, ears. Uh, cat's ears are great examples. They're very thin and you can see the veins and uh, they have a tendency to look um, very translucent. All right, so we are gonna create this in Maya. So here's the character that we've been working with so far, and I put some clothes on her. And uh, the first thing we want to talk about is the lighting setup. To, to test out the, the subsurface scattering, you really need to add a light to the back of your character. This is what's going to cause the, the scattering to happen. So remember, what we're going to try to achieve, or what we're going to achieve, is get the ears to glow and the fingers to glow as well. So the first thing is make sure you have a light behind the character and also the shadows are active. The other thing you need is a, uh, I added a room light to kind of help bounce the light a little bit more and make sure that it really pops out. And finally, there's a light directly to the character in about 45 degrees. So you can see it's a little bit of a, of a, right behind the character, a little bit of rim light, and then also um, a 45 degree angle. And that is all the lighting we really need. And the purpose for it is so that when we render, we're gonna get sharp shadows. So we're having two effects here. The first one is that we're seeing the sharp shadows. The second one is that we're actually getting rim lighting so we can actually see how the scattering is working. And finally, there's actually a light right behind her so we can see how the scattering works. I already have um, a texture map ready to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new material, and I'm gonna use a Lambert just to demonstrate how the color looks like. Go to File, click on that little folder. Here's her color map, and there she is. So this is her color map. She's completely textured, um, except for her bra and everything which needs to be added. But in general, this is what the color map is gonna look like. So I'm gonna render. And you can see where we're getting some kind of weird artifacts, but in general, you can see how the character is actually appearing. So let me go ahead and go here and I'm gonna press three to smooth her out. And let's go ahead and render her out again. Okay, so that's better. Um, so once again, we have sharp shadows. You can see where the textures are and uh, we can see where the highlights are occurring. So a lot of people may think that this is actually done, but the reality is, is that we can make this look so much better. And that's what subsurface scat and that's with subsurface scattering. So it's a mental ray node. So let's go into windows, rendering editors, hyper shade. It's a mental ray shader. So we can look down mental ray and then what we're looking for is so what we're looking for is the M-I-S-S-S, -S, so that's mental ray subsurface scattering fast shader. So go ahead and grab that one. And it's going to ask you, do you want to use any of these or do you want to create a new one? Uh, these are from previous exercises that I've done in the past, so just create a new one. And now we have a subsurface scattering shader. Okay, so let's go ahead and assign this to the character. Nope. And it's okay if it turns red, it's just a preview. And uh, the second thing we need to double check is to make sure that we're using mental ray. If we're only, let's say for example, we left it at default and we render it, you're gonna see that the only thing you see is eyeballs and that's terrifying. But if you change it to mental ray, we're gonna get the actual subsurface scattering. Uh, the renders are gonna take a lot longer because we're actually using a sophisticated uh, shader. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna see is that our render times are significantly higher. Before there were seven seconds, now they're 10. Uh, not that higher, but remember there aren't any maps attached to it. Also, we can see that she looks really weird. Uh, there's a lot of noise. Um, the shadows are totally blown out. Everything, she's just looks starting to look like a candle. So that's because we really need to tweak is the, um, the subsurface. Okay, so the subsurface attribute is very, can be a little bit 
complicated. But basically we have the ambient and overall color, the diffuse color, which they all work together, and the diffuse weight. The diffuse weight is basically how much, or anything that says weight, is how much do you want it to affect the actual color. So for example, in this case, it's 30% or 3.3, which is 30%. The other thing we need to look at is the subsurface scattering layer. If we open that up, you're gonna see that we have three types of subsurface. One is called epidermal, one is subdermal, and the other one is back. We're gonna tackle back first and then tackle epidermal and subdermal. To be able to see the effect, we really need to turn everything off. And to do that, we're gonna change our weight to zero. So let's go ahead and change our epidermal scatter to zero, our weight to zero, and our back scatter to zero. We also wanna go into um, our specularity and change that to zero as well. We don't need to see any specularity. So let's take a look at it as what it looks like right now. As you can see, this render is actually looks very similar to our Lambert. It's very, very uh, flat. There's nothing really special about it. So at least we know that we can actually start building from this. So first let's talk about backscatter. Backscatter is basically what's gonna make your ears turn red. You can see that it's already uh, um, red, which means it's like the blood vessels. Um, we, we are gonna go ahead and turn that on. So let's go ahead and start off with a weight of one. So again, we're working on the backscatter and we're just changing the backscatter weight to one. And already I can see that it's completely blown out. We really, the effect that we're looking for is for the ears to have a little bit of a glow, maybe around a little bit around the head. You know, we're trying to go for that feel. And the reason why is because of the scatter radius and the scatter depth. Basically what that means is, do you want the light to actually uh, penetrate the model by 25 units and then scatter by 25 units? And the answer is no, because she is in fact not that, um, that big, if you look at her versus the scale. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and scroll down. Oops, let's collapse specularity. And let's get rid of the noise. Uh, we're gonna go open up light map. And right now the light map is at 64, which is 64 by 64, and that's really small. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 1024, which is the powers of two. That's gonna help the uh, the noise. So if I take a little render there, the render may increase, but at least the quality of the render will be better. We definitely don't want to have all that graininess. So right away you can see that it's a lot smoother. The second thing we need to tackle is the backscatter and the radius. I'm going to go ahead and just put five and five and see what type of effect I get. So it's starting to look better, but we are still getting a very, very red edge. Uh, I mean, it's just the lights just going right through and just bouncing around like crazy. So we're going to change it to perhaps one, something really small. Okay, great. We're finally starting to see a little bit of that, um, of the character. The original skin is supposed to look like a Lambert. So now we're actually seeing the skin of the character, which is the Lambert. Um, we haven't attached any map to it. And we can also see that we're getting that red glow. Her neck is kind of blown out on sore her arms, but at least now we have a head. All right, so let's work on the depth. The depth seems to be going pretty far in. So let's go ahead and maybe cut that in half and see what we get. So you can already see that the depth really helped out. It is, uh, it's still pretty um, red in some areas, but at least now the neck is looking, it's looking pretty solid and there's not that much uh, glow, which is really what we're looking for. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the scatter as well just to test it out. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the results. I think the red is a little bit too red, so I'm gonna change the color. But in general, I'm getting a nice little glow around the edges of the neck, a little bit around the arms, definitely getting some ears. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna change the color just a little bit to make it look a little bit more pinky so that it doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, we're made out of, or this character is made out of some weird red material. We wanna make it look like it's actually more human, which is kind of pink, pinkish orangey color. All right, I'm start, I like the, this pinky orangey color is making it look a little bit more fleshy, which is what I want. Okay, so backscatter is done. We're gonna turn off the backscatter and we're gonna scroll up and start working on the epidermal scatter weight. So let's go ahead and turn that back on and let's see what we're gonna get. You can already see by the preview on the shader that it's pretty extreme. So let's see what we get. Okay, so the goal for this is that we don't want her to look like a candle. 
we should actually see the shadow pre pretty clearly. Our epidermal scatter is too high, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it to one and see what I get. Okay, so now we're seeing the effect and you can see that the shadow is a little bit darker, but it's still not dark enough. We really want it to be basically almost black. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an epidermal scatter radius. We're gonna do 0.5. It's starting to look better, but it's still not the same as it was at the very beginning, which is almost black. So we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna push it a little bit further. This time I'm gonna just make a selection and reduce the number by, uh, let's do 0.1 and see what happens. All right, so that look, that actually looks a lot better. The shadow is nice and dark. I'm gonna render the whole thing. Okay, so she's looking a little softer and the shadows are still a little bit soft, but at least now they're actually turning dark. I can try a little bit further. Let's push it just a little bit more and see what we get. We can actually make a comparison. Okay, so that's so this is looking significantly better. You can see that the shadows are actually very dark and that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna say that epidermal scatter is done. So we're gonna zero that out and then we're gonna turn on subdermal scatter. Similar to epidermal scatter, subdermal scatter is actually, uh, needs to be the same. We don't want any very light shadows. We actually want them to be dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to something dramatic like one and see what happens. So you can see that it's looking a lot better. Oh, I didn't save it. So you can see that it's looking better, but it still needs to be basically black. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna do 0.5. We're getting closer, but you can see that the, the shadow still isn't dark enough. So it's gonna get really low. So let's go ahead and do 0 0.05. So you can see that by changing it to a very low value, 0.05, I'm getting the dark shadows that I'm looking for, which is fantastic. Okay, so now that we have all three, um, now that we have all the subsurface scattering layers completed, let's go ahead and turn them all on together. The first thing is the back scatter. We really don't need it to be a one. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to like a 0.7 and maybe tweak it. As for epidermal and subdermal, the difference is that these two should equal to one. They should not go over that. So for example, I might do a point four and this one can be 0.6. So both of these together should equal one. So let's see what we're gonna get. Okay, what a difference. You can see that her skin really looks a lot nicer. Um, you can see the lights actually going through and bouncing around in this fleshy tone. You can see the nice shadows and all the lights are scattering. So looking pretty good so far. The next part is actually start adding our maps. So there's several ways you wanna add your map. You can just start plugging them in individually, but let's but they actually kind of work on together. So let's say for example, um, epidermal actually signifies the skin layer, the subdermal represents the fatty tissues, and the backscatter actually represents blood vessels and everything else underneath that. So you can actually create separate maps for each. I usually put my color map in the ep epidermal scatter, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just plugged in my, my color map on the epidermal and you can see the effect that this is what it was before, kind of yellowish, and now it's starting to look a little bit more uh, toned. You've got a little bit of the effect on the lips. You can see where her eyebrows are. Um, it definitely looks a lot nicer than what it was before and it's turning a little bit more human-like, which is what we want. The second part is actually plugging them in, in either overall, diffuse, or, or ambient. You kind of have to play around with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test it out on overall. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in overall. So there she is. This is the overall color. It is the color map that I put on earlier, plus the epidermal, and then we have the diffuse. So we can compare it to what we previously have. This is what she looked like in the past, and this is what she looks like now. It's a huge difference, and she definitely looks a lot more realistic. Let's test it out and let's put plug in our diffuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the connection on this one, bring it back to white. And then I'm gonna put it in diffuse just to show you guys what type of effect it's going to have. So you can see the difference between one and the other. One's very, very set, a little bit more saturated and this one's a little bit more desaturated. She actually looks kind of sick here. So. What you can do with this is actually make one character look healthy and um, 
and the other one you can just kind of flip the textures and you can see that you can start making her look pale and sick. And finally we're going to plug in ambient color. So that's another effect that you can play around with. So you have three choices. Whoops, I didn't keep the other one, sorry. But you can make this one look very ghostly. You can keep one that's pretty tanned or you can keep the other one as well. So there's a lot of things you can actually do or, or make the character look differently when it comes to um, your textures. But I'm actually going to go ahead and put overall color and just kind of keep that one. Okay. So now that we've actually managed to understand um, subsurface a little bit better, we can increase, maybe I might increase my diffuse weight just a little bit more so I can really see the textures that I've uh, laid out for her. So we'll render that one and see how it looks. Okay, I definitely like that a lot uh, better. Okay, so now that we figured that part out, let's go ahead and go to specularity. Specularity can be a little bit of a... Now this one's a little bit of a challenge. I'm just going to turn on the weight uh, just a little bit. So specularity is going to give you that feeling that it's made out of, um, that she's made out of, uh, she's glossy in some sort of way. But that's actually very human. We have oil and we actually do have gloss. Um, it's going to help if I add a bump map. So I'm going to go ahead and add a bump shader or a bump map in this case. I already have one set up, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Well, that's terrifying. As you can see, it's a little strong. So I'm going to go back to my bump node and change my bump depth to something smaller, like 0.3. And then I'm going to try again. So it's, so it's looking better, but I'm still feeling it's a little strong. So I'm just going to reduce it just a little bit more and then start working a little bit on the, on the specularity. So the specularity basically has two types of specularity, the primary and the secondary. So if we turn off the primary, and take a look at the secondary, you're gonna see what, what it does. So when you can see that the second specularity it actually is more like a, um, the effect of around the, in front of the face. And the other specu specularity is actually around the edges. So we just want a little bit of each. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to 0.3, 0.3. And uh, I'm gonna plug in a map. Because I really want the lips to be very specular, but the skin doesn't have to be as specular. So on your specularity map, make sure that the lips are actually pretty white and the rest of the body can be a little bit darker. Okay guys, so that's basically how subsurface scattering works. Again, you want to start with turning everything off and then start with the back scatter. Then start going through the epidermal, subdermal, turn all of them on and then stop start plugging in your uh, color maps. So again, the difference is pretty dramatic. This is how it started. This is a Lambert. This is just um, a Lambert with a color texture on it. And then with all of the other stuff, this is what she looks like. So it really does make a difference on your character. It adds that beautiful je ne sais quoi that makes the character look a lot more organic and alive. The second part of the next, the next tutorial is actually going to be how to create eyes. Eyes are really important as well. Um, it is these, um, it's the window to the soul, you could say. So we're going to tackle that next. All right. Hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, guys. I'll see you next time.